Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Opinion Machine, the show where we talk about all things gaming. My name is Killjoy, and today we're going to be talking about my favourite games that I played in 2023. Now, rather than just having a singular one game, I thought, you know, let's just talk about all the good games that I played or, you know, finished, played, whatever, and enjoyed in the year of 2023. Um, I don't have any physical objects for some of the games. I've got my Switch games here I'll go through in a second. Uh, I, I played some stuff on PC last year as well, new stuff, so let's talk about those things first. Now this is, there is no ordering, there is no ranking, this is just stuff that I enjoyed personally. And I'm going to start off with a game called Stronghold Definitive Edition. If you've never played Stronghold, that is a castle sim style game, it's an RTS. And this is just a really nice sort of, uh, nice package of the original game with um, nicer visuals, more uh, more animation frames in that, some new campaigns, some new options, some accessibility stuff. It's just a nice new package of this classic game. It wasn't very expensive, actually it was about £10 on launch. And it was just, Stronghold's a classic game, it's already a great game and it was just made better by this new, um, this new version of the game looking nicer uh, like i said having all these bells and whistles added onto it it was definitely kind of like a remaster done right you know going back and really improving things and uh having some of the original voice actors return and all that good stuff and giving options to players and making it run better on a newer system so that's awesome really really good game not very expensive at all would recommend if you've never played stronghold definitely worth it um i played three other fairly big games on PC as well. I played Street Fighter 6 last year. Not a huge amount of it. I uh, didn't really play any competitive, but i got to say that game is phenomenal. For a, a, a new Street Fighter game, it looks the part, it plays the part, it's awesome. I really want to get back to that and play more of that. That game was super, super fun. Just just an awesome game. If you haven't played Street Fighter, like I recommend it as well. Just just a really well put together game. A lot of deep mechanics there. There's like a, there's levels to that game of like you know the casual side and then working their way down towards like that proper seriously pro competitive level. Um, but just a ton of content, a lot of fun stuff in there. A lot, like a lot of a, a, a game that really wants to bring in the casual market as well, which is good for fighting games because they kind of need it. Awesome game, loved it. Um, Baldur's Gate Three. Despite what you've been seeing on the channel, um, I did I did enjoy a good chunk of that game. Um, it did run out of steam for me personally, but overall it was still a really fun time. Played it in four-player co-op as well, which was kind of chaotic. Wouldn't recommend doing that if you're new to the game. Do that after you finished it. Um, but the you know obviously a game that was full of a lot of really good characters, a lot of good story, a lot of good writing, um, some really really incredible moments. Good for D and D players. Good for a lot of fans around the world. Made a nice community. All that good stuff. Despite some of my negativity, I still don't think the game is bad by any means. I do think there is a solid foundation there. Just unfortunately, I ran into some issues. But it was still, while I was having fun with it, I was having a lot of fun with it. So, great game. And then recently, and the first game that I finished in 2024 was Shadow Gambit The Cursed Crew. This is from a studio called Mimimi, Me, 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 I believe that's how you pronounce them. It. it was a German studio, I think. They've recently shut down because they make these incredible stealth action games which is a niche genre. And this was the third one they'd done. They did uh, Shadow uh, Tactics, they did Desperados 3, and then they did Shadow Gambit. And honestly, this is just a solid game all around. Incredibly good mechanics, um, fun writing, fun stories. Not, not obviously groundbreaking or anything like that to, compared to Baldur's Gate 3, but nevertheless, it was it's still a phenomenal game. I've actually completed this game um, there's still got content to do in it, but this is one of those like sleeper hits. If you really like stealth games or you, and you like pirate theming, awesome game would recommend it fantastic so those are my like um the games that i played on pc um and then i've got my switch games here that i've also played that came out in 2023 so we're going to go through those starting with a game that i kind of forgot about but you guys might remember came out the very beginning of the year and that was fire emblem engaged now i didn't actually finish this i got very far into it this game got this game got ragged on a lot, and I and I'll be honest, I didn't. I liked the story, I liked the characters. I imagine there were some issues with some of that, but I I like the game as a whole. I like I just like Fire Emblem. I like Fire Emblem Free Houses. I like this game. This game was just awesome. I really like some of the like the classes and some of the things they did with it. The rings kind of added a new element. They did some of them more overpowered, but I I really like this game. I think this game is solid. Like it's a solid Fire Emblem game. Would recommend it. Um, it's awesome. What else have we got going on here? that came out 
Oh, we've got to talk about we've got to talk about this game. Samba de Amigo Party Central. Okay, might not be a perfect game, but I have an absolute blast playing this. I still haven't um, finished everything. I do need to get some of the DLC songs and stuff. But sometimes a party game comes along and it's just like, you know what? This this was just a lot of fun using my Joy-Con, considering my Joy-Con are a bit knackered. Um, but I, I'm glad this game exists. I'm glad this game exists and I'm super happy about it. It's just, this is fun. This is fun. You know, this is like... WarioWare. WarioWare is a very fun game. I did not buy the most recent WarioWare and move it. I still haven't got that. It's on my list of games to get. Uh, uh, what else have we got in there? We're going through some of the smaller games first. Super Bomberman R2. Not an incredible, out uh, mind-blowing game, but this game has a lot of content, and I actually really like the fact that you know Bomberman's still going. I, I'm a big fan of Bomberman. I love the multi-64 player battle royale mode in this. I think it works really well. Single player was okay. Doesn't the game doesn't really work too well with like the like an eight-directional um, analog stick. It works better with a D-pad. Has some issues. It's not amazing, but the amount of multiplayer modes in this is a game that I actually kind of enjoyed playing online. It was a lot of fun, and it's that classic Bomberman action that I really enjoyed. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got. Metro Prime Remastered, and I, I'm going to say this right now, I think this is the best looking game to come out in 2023. Um, this game has had an insane glow up from the original. The original already looked good on GameCube. This, wow, just the best looking Switch game, hands down. I don't think there's anything that looks better on Switch than this. This, this is a game I also didn't finish. Um, I got like a quarter of the way through. I do plan on finishing this one this year. Um, just because now that the the new control scheme this is this is a remaster done right new control scheme people say remake but they only really overlaid the graphics it's basically the same game it's definitely a remaster but uh, it's, a, it's a phenomenally good one at that nice bit of accessibility options with the colors as well and then probably the the other big free games that came out we'll talk about super mario wonder it's a short it's a shorter of a game but this is an incredible 2D Mario game. This is should be on anyone's list if you've got kids. This is the perfect sort of game. Fantastic in multiplayer. Really fun. Really creative. Probably the most creative and also one of the Mario games that's really pushed the Mario games forward in terms of some new ideas and things like that. The only downside to the game is the music's a bit like, like that. It's not particularly great. Um, there's some good tracks, but it's, it's just not that memorable. Um... And the boss fights are kind of here and there. But the actual levels and the stuff you can do in the levels and the things that happen in this game, awesome. Really, really cool game. Wonderful art style as well. Pardon the pun. But uh, yeah, just a wonderful art style, wonderful game all round and, and all fun. A lot of fun. So, all right. Tears of the Kingdom. This came out in 2023. This was, I put about 100 hours into this. This is a big, big, big game and it deserves a lot of its credit. Um, I definitely think um breath of the wild might have had more of an impact but i think this game refines a lot of things that that game did and it added you know some crazy stuff and the, the thing about this game is the fact that it, i had one tiny bug this game should not run on a switch the way that you can really push the engine it's kind of nuts what you can do with this um and this it's just it's just a, a one of the biggest games I've ever played, probably, in terms of just like what you can do in it, the size of the map and all the underground stuff, just everything they added is it's like just crazy. Um, definitely a game that I wouldn't recommend going in trying to do everything because you might get burnt out a little bit, but it's still good, still good, still worth it. And then obviously, last but no means least, Advance Wars One Plus Two Reboot Camp, and I'm, I'm going to show it off because I can the reversible cover because that's awesome as well. Ultimately, like, if I had to pick a game of the year of 2023, this would be it. But all these games that I've listed off, it's kind of like, wow, 2023 was crazy. This this game came out, finally, got delayed, obviously, twice. Got delayed by an entire year because of the war. This is just a product of the fact that it's, wow, it, this exists. It is, a, it is, I don't even know if it says intelligent systems on it. It probably just says Nintendo. The fact that this, this exists, we've got a, a remake of... The first two games are fantastic and this might actually help push towards getting a new one of the franchise or getting the other games on switch like just don't forget about this game like this game is cute as hell like yeah okay the theme of war is not exactly cute but like everything else about it is really charming really heartwarming all that good stuff my microphone's running away and 
I just, like, I can't describe it. You guys have seen me. You know how I feel about it. Like, this is just, just a game that is by far, like, my favourite thing to come out in a while. The Switch has given me a lot of fantastic experiences over these last few years. You know, seven years, whatever it's been. But it's nice to be able to also talk about the games I played on PC this year as well. Because compared to the last couple of years, I didn't have there was a couple of things coming out. Whereas 2023, there's all sorts. I didn't even play Future Redeemed for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And I hear that is incredible. So that's something else I need to get on. And I'm sure I played some indie games and I'm probably missing something. These games that I've mentioned here today are just the ones that I'm just like, here's stuff that I remember playing this uh, in 2023 uh, on the Switch, on my PC, and, and, and loving. You know, and just being like, hey... <laughs> We we ate well as gamers in 2023. You can't deny that it was an incredible year across all platforms. And there's stuff out there that I didn't even play. Resident Evil 4 Remake was massively uh, held in wide, wide regard. Lethal Company came out. Not the sort of game I would play, but it came out in early access last year. Just tons of stuff. Tons and tons of stuff for anyone and everyone. And that's really awesome to see. Um, so, you know, these, these are the games that I enjoyed in 2023. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of other ones. I, I hear about a lot of indie games, like Dave the Diver. Not Dave, sorry, Dave the Diver isn't an indie game. Dave the Diver came out last year, but there was a ton of indie games like Cocoon and other things like that that came out. Pizza Tower, um, stuff like that that came out, and that I didn't get around to playing, but I've heard really good things about. So I'm sure there's a bunch of people out there that have their their favorite games too. But there you go. That is all. Some of, or not all, but most of the stuff that I really enjoyed in 2023. And 2024 is looking good already. We, uh, I think Prince of Persia Lost Crown is just around the corner, if not out today uh, when I'm recording this. I'm not sure. It's out very soon. Um, and then we've got things to look forward to. Or I, at least I have, like, Paper Mario Remake, uh, Princess Peach Showtime, um, New Commandos Origins. There's, there's some fun things coming. I'll have to do a deep dive into what's coming out that I'm aware of right now and, and say, be like, here you go. This is what my year's looking like. These are the games I'm excited for. But... Yeah, as for 2023, fantastic year for gaming. Probably one of the best ones we've had in a long time. And everything that I've shown you here today, all worth playing it, despite my any of these games having shortcomings. Still worth it, still a lot of fun. Go out and play stuff, and hopefully like you have a good time with any of these. And this can be a recommendation list for anyone who hasn't played some of these games. So, awesome. Anyway, that'll do it for me today then. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more content, then whack that subscribe button. Links for Facebook and Twitter will be down below in the description as always. And until next video, I will see you then.